Hello there. Today I'm gonna talk about this AD line by ADL laptop. It is a uh, an NBE 750M 46SX33. That's not true anymore. With a 64 gray monochrome LCD, 640 by 480, and this does this isn't true. Now. As you can see, the thing has been patched up, the battery has been rebuilt, but these are dead anyway, so the battery is pretty much dead and leaky. Now, this laptop. It is built cheaply. It is built really cheaply. Really cheaply made. Um, structural support is almost non existent on the whole system. Um, as you can see, it gets scratched just by about anything. It is really scuffed up. It is in really bad condition. It is really, really scuffed up. And as you can tell by the lines, uh, I'm guessing AD Line tried to sell this laptop as a poor man's uh, power book because the thing has a lot of the style of the power book, including the port door. So let's talk about uh, the outside first. Nothing in the front. Floppy drive, you know, 1.44 megabytes, 3.5 inch. On the back, keyboard connector, PS2, of course. Um, serial, parallel, VGA. What's, what was this? Oh, yeah, line output, which sounds horrible. It sounds horrible. Um, it is the noisiest line output I have ever heard on a computer. Microphone input and docking port. Uh, given the, rari the rarity of this laptop, I think I'm never gonna find a docking station for it. Not that I want to, this thing isn't worth anything. It's a piece of crap. As you can see, it has a big crack right there. And a power input. The power input can be from 15 volt to uh, 18 volts it doesn't it isn't even specified um, PCMCIA 16 bit uh, slots 5 volts we have two latches let's open it up so when we open it up we're presented with a 9 inch I think it is 9 inch, yeah about 9 inch, uh, monochrome LCD display, backlit, thankfully, uh, we're presented with suspend, resume button, brightness buttons, contrast buttons and volume buttons, and a power button right there, which is a hard power button, it is hardware, uh, a pretty crappy keyboard, this thing is well, it's near acceptable, but it is a bit mushy. The keys don't bottom out. I mean, I'm used to that behemoth of a keyboard right there, which is a mechanical keyboard with white Alps switches. But, I mean, this thing feels pretty crappy. Uh, of course, a lot crappier than the behemoth that is right there trackball which is pretty good I'm not gonna be able to show it to you today and I don't think ever uh, you know secondary button uh, primary button it's a trackball what do you expect and you can use it is really service friendly kinda you can open it up by uh, moving these tabs pulling it 
front and it just opens like a hood. You have your power supply right here. This is on a separate circuit board. Your CPU. I think this is the graphics chip. And here with this proprietary connector would go an extended memory. Uh, a memory expansion unit. Here you have your hard drive, your floppy drive, and there's the battery all down, down there. Here is the CMOS battery, leaking and dead. Um, let's talk about specs. Right now, uh, well, I got it. Uh, this thing came out of, first of all, let me... Uh, this thing came out of the factory with a 486 uh, SX33, which means no floating point uh, uh, unit, no FPU, no math coprocessor as they're known, they were known in this time, around this time. Um, I got it with a, a, a DX33, a 486DX33. So math coprocessor, a plus, and I have upgraded it to a 486DX66. Uh, so it is running at 66 megahertz with a floating point unit. It has four megabytes of EDO RAM, upgradable with this connector. Again, I don't know where to find uh, such modules, and well, let's plug it in and turn it on. Although we could turn it on by the battery, the battery still holds like 5 minutes of charge. As you can see, it isn't plugged in. And uh, the problem I'm having is uh, the ID controller seems to have died on this thing. The hard drive auto detection uh, doesn't work. It just plain doesn't, and I cannot access the hard drive. I I have tried putting in the drive geometry uh, manually. It has a two hundred and sixty-two megabyte uh, Toshiba hard drive. Um, no, I, it just doesn't let me access um, the internal hard drive. So the internal IDE controller seems to be completely dead so we're putting MS-DOS uh, 6.2 from a floppy as you can see we can do much I could do a you know a directory listing what would be the point I wanted to show you Windows 3.1 which is what I had installed I had a fresh install of Windows 3.1 on the hard drive but I turned it on today and well it's been like uh, six months since I don't turn it on but I turned it on today and the thing uh, just didn't detect the hard drive I'm very upset about that but what can you expect from this piece of crap uh, so yeah there we go you can access uh, the CMOS setup uh, in any at, a, at any given moment by pressing ctrl alt s and that just gives you the setup as you can see phoenix setup utility version 1.1 also i mean whoops my spanish uh, slipped off right there uh, version 1.0 right there as you can see it has the time this is the actual time by the way um, as you can see verse support the parallel can also function as a floppy port for some reason. Here's the drive geometry, which is for some reason it doesn't calculate to 62 megabytes. Um, but if I enter any drive, uh, I mean, this is the drive geometry that is stated in Toshiba's website for this model hard drive. If I enter anything else than this, the thing just tells me it has a disk error and it couldn't initialize it. And even though it seems to have initialized it, uh, it can't access it for some reason, so I don't know. As you can see, 
four megs of RAM. And we have power management, which I have disabled because it will kill the hard drive. And video. And that's all I can show you, really. There's nothing else I can show you. You have LEDs right there. There's really nothing else I can show you about this laptop because the thing won't boot into Windows. So what I'm planning to do on this thing is I'm gonna buy a Raspberry Pi Zero and uh, a 4x3 uh, 9 inch display. And the cool thing about this thing is that uh, the keyboard controller is actually right here. This is the keyboard controller. So this ribbon cable just carries uh, the LEDs the LED signals, uh, PS2 from the from the trackball, which this is PS2, and PS2 from the keyboard. So I can just use a PS2 to USB adapter to uh, connect it to the Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'm gonna buy a Raspberry Pi Zero, a USB hub, and a USB power bank, and I'm gonna stuff this thing with all that. Well, and the display of course the 9 inch color display because this thing uses some old uh, I don't know what it, the protocol is called but it uses a weird uh, connector right on there so I cannot use this display I would use it because it is really nice uh, even if it is black and white but yeah I'm gonna buy that and stuff it with a Raspberry Pi Zero and hopefully I can use it for my mobile computing needs a uh, thing that I do with my uh, uh, my 4000 CDS my Toshiba uh, satellite 4000 CDS uh, right here I should put a card for that so this has been the AD line by ADL uh, laptop hope you liked it I'm sorry that I can't put it into Windows it is a shame but uh, yeah old piece of crap just died so you know comment like subscribe whatever and bye